Hey YouTube, this is uh, Curious Guy. Um, as promised earlier, uh, in another video where I was just explaining really how I achieved this sort of uh, homemade PCB effect with uh, laser printer, toner transfer method, and etching, uh, I started basically the video by describing how I got to this point uh, without showing it. So I thought I'd take the time today to show you how I get a pattern onto copper uh, in order to be able to etch it in acid. So the technique that I've used uh, for that, that example is really to print out uh, my template onto uh, glossy paper. Uh, this is 150 grams per meter squared paper. It's not really a thick card or anything. It's pretty, pretty easy to use. Uh, you can see just under the light there, it's reflecting, uh, and that's the, the glossy surface with the laser jet toner ink printed on top. And that's the pattern I'm going to use today. Um, and I've, I'm going to put it on a piece of copper, which is single-sided PCB uh, template material. I've given this surface a rub down with a uh, sandpaper, which is over here. This is a very fine grit sandpaper. This is 600 uh, grit. Uh, and uh, once I've wa uh, wiped it down, uh, I'll then clean it off with isopropyl alcohol, which is a very nice degreaser and, and cleanser. You really need a, a nice clean surface for this, this method to work. Uh, this is a laminator, a simple A4 laminator. This is something that's uh, uh, found in any stationer shop. I haven't done anything to it. I haven't increased the temperature. I haven't uh, uh, played with the, uh, the the feed speed or anything like that. It's pretty standard, uh, but it seems to have worked for the the smaller boards. And today I'm going to show you a slightly bigger example. Uh, basically, the process is you take the image that you'd like to uh, uh, record, and in this case, I'm just going to line it up here uh, with uh, the overhead light so I can see just making sure that I've got my image where I want it and that seems to be pretty good uh, and just start passing it through the the laminator now this process takes a little while because you need heat and pressure to transfer the toning image onto the PCB <laughs> and as you can hear the laminator is not entirely happy with the fact that you're pushing uh, rather thick material, uh, PCBs are a couple of millimeters th thick, uh, when it's really expecting just a little plastic pocket and uh, a few bits of paper inside perhaps. It takes a few passes to build up the heat into the board and then the pressure starts to uh, fuse the plastic toner uh, onto the copper. So I'm going to give this maybe 10 or 15 runs for the machine, so you probably want to fast forward to the end of this video uh, where uh, I start to reveal the results. And I'll rotate that board a little bit just to, uh, you know, be different about the pressure and the, t and the, uh, the way it's fed into the toner, uh, into the laminator. <clears throat> and the board's getting hot now. It's going to be a little ginger to, a little gingerly uh, to hold. I'm not actually counting the number of passes. I've, <laughs> I keep meaning to do that myself, but uh, it's always something else going on to distract me. As I say, the results are pretty nice um, in uh, in what can be achieved. So let's let's see if uh, I can replicate it today.
And I'm moving it uh, across different areas of the laminator because obviously this bore is going to suck heat out of the laminator. So this part of the roller is probably hotter. <laughs> Now, oh, hot, hot, hot. Oh. And this will make a bit of noise as well, but it's probably hotter down here now as this part has cooled because the heat's gone into the board. You can just start to see the pattern on the back of the paper. Um, once that image starts to kind of bleed through the paper, you know that some of the fusing process is happening. I suspect if I had a thinner paper, uh, maybe 120 milligram, uh, 120 grams per meter squared or something like that, um, we might have a, a quicker result. Essentially, what you want to do is to have the toner fuse to the copper and weakens it weakens the uh, the paper surface and that makes the paper easy to tear off without using any water so as you can guess this is pretty small scale production uh, using a couple of boards here and there um, but I'm sure you can use larger boards with larger laminators and perhaps increase the temperature a little bit. Okay, let's have a look. Whew. It's a bit hot to hold, that's a good sign. Let it cool for a little second here. Ooh, Ooh the board is hot. And there we have it. Let me see it there. The uh, laminated image is transferred to the copper. Very nice. And the resulting paper is here. Uh, you can see there's a bit of a black edge down the side, which was hanging off the, the board. It wasn't uh, part of the. There was no copper against that black edge. There was a couple. There was one spot there. Perhaps the camera can pick it out. Uh, but otherwise, the polished surface remains on the paper in a grid pattern, and where the toner is fused to the board, that's come away. And so it's white because that's the back of the paper. And there you go. From this to this, fully etched, that'll be the next video. So thanks for watching. Take care. Bye bye.